Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap where we start out by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the S&P 500 E-mini futures throughout the day. There is a process and set of rules that when followed will usually result in profitable trades at these levels. Right now, it's 10 minutes after 8 a.m. Eastern. We've got another hour and 20 minutes or so before the market opens. After the closing bell, We'll come back to this same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels and any profit gained or loss incurred for the day is logged in a tracking system that we'll go over at the end of the video. This way you can see the long-term effectiveness of this trading approach. And before we sign off, I'll look at some longer time frames and other indexes perhaps to get an idea of what the near term might look like. This is an important week in the market because of the FOMC interest rates announcement on Wednesday. So the SPY and most of the other ETFs and indexes that I track are at important places, all of their own accord. Time and price are always important. Decisions will likely be made soon and a direction picked. The odds are it will happen on or after Wednesday's announcement, but never underestimate what the market can do and when it can do it. Usually the Mondays and Tuesdays leading up to an important FOMC announcement are relatively slow, but don't count on it. I think any spark could move the market at any time, considering where we are in terms of price and time. There are only four levels on the board today. I'm just not comfortable with having too many levels in case volatility picks up. Not sure how likely that is today, but I'm just going to be careful this week. As we've been discussing at face value, the SPY is bullish in that they are above all the moving averages on all time frames. That doesn't mean they're going to go up forever, though. They've got resistance to get through before they're up at the former all-time highs from mid-July, I believe. And here we are in mid-September, back at that same area on a week that a ton of investors have been waiting for. Probably a good idea to buckle up. The market could get crazy pretty soon. They're teetering right now. We'll be back after the closing bell to analyze any trades that may have been produced by these four levels today. Catch you on the other side. Well, we made it to the end of the day. Market closed uh, three and a half hours ago and no real fireworks to speak of. They did hang around this one level. Two trades were two trades were possible. I took one trade and so how would you have done it? So 562 even would be this level with a five cent buffer applied to it. Price was coming back up into the second time. Now they hit it early on and you're welcome to take the trade right after the market opens. I'd like to give the market about 15 minutes to settle in. So that's 945. In the Eastern time zone, they're coming up. So I went short. Well, I didn't go short here. I went short a little higher. You'll see this. But talking about displaying by the rules, you would have gone short here, given this a little bit of time to develop. They came down and gave you the base hit, and they came down even farther later. But that's just, I want, want to take one short trade at the level. Now, if they get above the level, which they did here, if enough time passes, and they just barely did within a few minutes, then you're, you're welcome to take this for a recycle trade. And this would be the second trade. I didn't take this one. I was in a meeting for the rest of the afternoon. But Long trade here, and here's your bounce. It's four points for a recycle trade. I'm not going to tr trust it again, although they did bounce several times. I want to point something out when we look at maybe the daily chart of where they got to and how they pulled away. The high of Friday, last Friday the 13th, was I think right here, 563.03. They got right above that and pulled back away. So interesting they didn't close above the high of Friday. They're still kind of teetering a little bit and volume definitely dried up and they were pretty low during the middle of the day. Not much more to say about that. Here is the trade I took. So you notice at this point it's 954. So you know the four, the 15 minutes had passed and I would have taken the short trade here, but I just kind of got set up, kind of pulled in a few things so in the morning. So it really wasn't in my computer until right here. So anyway, set it up. I didn't have the order in the system, but they were up here and I just thought, well, I would have taken the short trade. I'm just going to go ahead and go short, maybe at a better price, which you'll see that right there. Just sold at the market. Took half of it off, about four point base hit, trailed the other half, but they came back and stopped me up. So, but down here was four points from the entry point if you just stuck to the rules. So either way, that's a base hit or more. And then you know that they came down later and got below it. And I was, you know, expecting, I had a trade, an order down here for a while, but it never got there. So that's off the table. And at some point, or before noon or so, I just kind of stopped and did not take any more trades. So when they got back up here, I wasn't even at my computer. I ate some lunch and then was in a meeting for about four hours. So the afternoon was kind of full. So one trade for me, two trades if you're playing by the rules. Before we go to the log, just want to point out on the daily chart here, 
So I mentioned yesterday, or sorry, Friday the 13th, the high was 563.03. They got above it right toward the end of the day, trying to close above that, which is going to signal some type of strength, but you can see where they closed. 562.84, right below that. Kind of interesting. They're still not up to this area, and then they got to get above that to the all-time highs. Above the moving averages, tomorrow, Tuesday's most likely going to be slow, leading up to the FOMC announcement on Wednesday. But anything can happen. They're they're kind of an important area. And there's something I saw on the four-hour chart. Maybe we can look at that. This really may not mean anything, but there's a little doji candle on just subpar volume, not above the moving average here. I have a 90-period moving average on the volume uh, histogram down here. But the timing's about right. They've been going up, and really it's about right on the daily chart as well for them to pull back. But, you know, they're really fighting this. I mean, this is basically a big consolidation or starting to look like a consolidation. I mean, that's how you would describe this 15-minute chart, wouldn't you? Bullish for several days, back to, from uh, 9-11, then sideways. And that's this is just a smaller aspect of a bigger move anyway. So this is consolidation, making their own little range for a while under an important area. And they're waiting for the FMC announcement on Wednesday, most likely, before something big happens. Keep your seatbelt on. We'll see what happens this week. The tracking system has two logs. The first one I call the playing by the rules log. You can see if you were playing by the rules, you took the one short trade at that level. And then as they came back up uh, or on the other side of it, you took the recycle trade that would have given you eight points, two base hits. Mine, not quite so impressive. I had a two contract trade in the net 2.12 points. Yes, I know that's not ending on the correct ticks, you know, 0 0.25, 0 0.50 or whatever else. But two contracts got, you know, four points with one of them and then a little bit more. And that's pretty much all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's trading recap. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And we'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels. Catch you in the next recap video. Have a great day.